This video is gonna show you exactly what A2P 10 DLC registration is and how to get approved from a guy who failed four times before finally getting it right and getting this wonderful screen. So stick around. Hey, welcome back. Before we get too deep into go high level and actually show you the approval process, I wanna briefly explain what A2P 10 DLC registration actually is. Now, if you're unaware, A2P stands for application to person and 10 DLC is for 10 digit long code, meaning phone numbers. Basically what this means is you can register your phone number to be able to text people from a software like high level application to person. So you high level are texting people with a 10 digit long code phone number. A2P was started in the middle of 2023 and it was meant to actually cut down the amount of spam messages that people were getting for their phones because agencies and businesses were cold texting and spamming all kinds of people. And the carriers realized we need to crack down on who's actually able to send text messages in mass using automation. In response to that, they created a registration process that all businesses need to adhere to so that they can text their customers for whatever reason at all. If you do not do A2P registration, you will not be able to text from the high level system. So having said that, let's jump right into high level. I'll show you what you need to get approved and I will do the process step by step. All right, so we're here inside of high level and this is the screen that I actually am approved. If you see the verified approved approved, you can actually skip this video because you are done. It took me four or five tries to get this. We're gonna walk through it where this actually is. And to do that, we're actually gonna hop into another account with a phone number that is not registered. Now, to get to the A2P registration inside of high level, it's very easy to find. We're gonna come down into here, we're gonna go to settings on the left side, and then we're gonna go into phone numbers. To go into phone numbers, you're going to see this trust center up here at the top. And as you can see, we got this big red bar. A2P is incomplete or it has failed. Go to trust center to start and resubmit. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go here into the trust center that's here. And if you do not have the trust center tab up here, you need to go into advanced settings, which you should have. And you need to just hook up the lead connector phone system. If you're still on Twilio, you're not going to have the trust center. So switch over to the LC phone system or lead connector phone system in order to enable the trust center uh, tag. And if you're at the agency level, you can do this in your agency settings and just default everybody to the LC phone system so they can all follow this process or you can do it for them. All right, so inside the A2P registration trust center is here. There's a couple of things that you're gonna wanna have before you get to this point. All right, so now that we're here and we know where the A2P registration screen is, what we wanna do is a couple of things we wanna make sure that we have uh, before we actually start this process because it's gonna make things really, really easy. Now, number one is we wanna make sure that we have our business profile all 100% and filled out correctly with all of our information. That's number one. You bring it up here on screen, make sure all of this is filled out correctly. Uh, most importantly, you want to have down here where you have the business type, business industry, business ID. I don't have this here on this particular account. So what we're going to do here, this is actually a limited liability or sole proprietorship. They used to have these separate, but now you wanna have them uh, they're together. 99% of the people watching this video, you're gonna have an LLC or a sole proprietorship. Uh, if you're doing any kind of real business, you should have an LLC. I'll have another video uh, linked up here. But if you have an LLC, it's over there. Put your business industry, since this is uh, a fictitious account, we're going to go marketing. Let's go down here. We're gonna go here into media. Now, when it comes to business industry, you're gonna select the industry that your account, the account that you're trying to get approved is in. Uh, for this case, I'm gonna put media. This is a demonstration account. I'm not actually gonna be sending any customers here. Uh, business registration ID type. What you're going to do if you are in the US, like I think most of you are watching this video, you're going to use your EIN number, which you get from your SS4. You should have your EIN number. If you don't, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a video on how to get one of those. It's really simple. Uh, get your EIN and you're gonna put your EIN here. Okay, what I'm gonna do for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna use my EIN number for my main business that's over here. Put that in there and then your business area, regions of operations, I think most people here operating this, watching this video are gonna be USA and Canada. And then we're going to update our information, but again, make sure everything is filled out. All right, so once that's done, you're gonna actually go back here into where it says in the settings, you're gonna go into phone numbers, go back into the trust center. Once we go back here into the trust center, we'll actually notice that there are actually two approvals that you need to get. There is the brand, which is essentially going to 
verify that you are a legit brand, a legit business. And then the one that everybody gets tripped up on is the campaign, which is getting approved for the actual text messages themselves. So to start here from scratch, you come down here into the wizard, we're gonna hit start registering now. There's a blue button, click it. It's gonna walk you through the process. Are we registering located in the US and Canada? Yes. Do we have a tax ID? Yes. Okay, so we hit continue. It's gonna pull all of your business details from that business setting screen. That's why I said you have to have it all filled out. It's gonna pull everything into here, pre-populate everything here, uh, your business email, your website, you make sure that you have a website URL. Make sure that's over there. Again, area of operations is there. Great, cool. Now we're gonna hit continue. Business address, again, make sure you have it filled out before. It's gonna pull all from your business settings. If that's, if that's correct, we hit continue. Now, authorized representatives, I didn't have it filled out over in settings, so I'm gonna have to enter it manually here. Once that's done there, we hit continue. Now, this is the first decision that you're going to have to make in the process that's not fairly straightforward. You're gonna have two options here. You're gonna have low volume standard or high volume standard. Now, low volume standard is where most of the people watching this video are going to have to select because it's gonna give you up to 6,000 text segments per day and most people watching this video are not going to get above that for quite a while. High volume standard is for established enterprise level businesses that are sending seven, eight, nine, 10,000 texts a day. In me and my business, I send about 2,000 texts a month at my scale. So you're gonna do low volume standard. Uh, they do this because it also keeps the fees lower. I'm gonna bring up fees on the screen here from the, uh, from the high level help docs. As you can see, Low volume fees are a lot less than high volume fees. And since we're starting out and we're getting registered, if we're not doing, if we don't need the high volume fees, we're not gonna pay high volume money. And then after we select low volume standard, we have to check the box acknowledging that there is going to be a fee for applying of $21. And then we also notice that the fees will also be charged again in case of failures and resubmissions. I paid this fee four different times. Now, I made this video so you don't have to pay the fee more than once. Once we acknowledge that, we hit continue. Now the campaign use case, what you can do here is there's multiple types of registrations that you can make. I select low volume mixed. The reason being is that I'm texting people for multiple different reasons. Now, if you were only using text for like customer care, right? For let's say someone buys a course, you text them their login, that would be customer care. But if you register for customer care, you cannot and you will not be able to text people to send maybe a promotion or a sales follow-up because you're not registered for that. So what they've done is they've actually created the low volume mixed so that you can send for a really any reason at a low volume. And again, low volume being less than 6,000 a day. Uh, again, same thing, two-factor authentication. If you wanted to have send people uh, credentials through two-factor authentication and you selected that, you're only registered to send people codes. So again, most people watching this video low volume mixed. This was failure number one. I thought I was only going to do this for customer care and uh, I failed. So low volume mixed, that is the campaign use case that you want. Now use case description. What's really nice is that high level gives you some examples that are here. And the one that I went with was the top one over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paste in the example uh, use case description there. And it's gonna say this, this campaign sends appointment confirmation uh, reminder messages to customers once they've booked an appointment with legal name of the business. Now you guys all know me online as Don Bavaro or Digital Marketing Misfits. And while Misfits is another LLC that I run, um, the Datapreneur LLC is actually my personal uh, business that's here. So my customers don't use it, they don't see it anywhere, but for the purposes of registration, you have to put the legal name of the LLC in the application. So appointment with the Datapreneur LLC on website, dombavaro.com, and they opted in to receive promotional and notification SMS from the Datapreneur LLC. Now, I would also add to this, for me, for my personal use case, I, I wanna be 100% transparent and tell them exactly what I'm doing. So yes, I do appointment reminder messages, but I also send a course login credentials via SMS as well. I'll just add that there on the end. I don't know if it makes a difference, but that's what I did because that's how I'm texting people. Now, sample mentions is number one. This is very, very important that you actually have to have all of the compliance elements in the sample messages. You have to actually have the legal name of the business in the messages, and you need to give them sample messages in the use case that you give them up top. This is, I think this was uh, number two or number three is the reason why I had failed. Because I gave them, I, I think I told them, 
I think I told them that it was, I'm using this for course, course credentials and I gave them appointment reminders and they were like, that's not correct, fail. So what we're going to do here is see example. They give you, they give you uh, examples here. Let's go into the top one here, copy and paste. Now it says, hi, John. This is John from company name. So now again, you wanna put your legal name. This is not what you have to send via text messages. This is just to get approvals. So if your customer says, I would say to my customer, hi, John, this is Dom from dombavaro.com because that's where they opted in on that website. But for the purposes of this application, I'm gonna say, hey, John, this is Dom from the Datapreneur. LLC. So again, go here, change your name, whatever your name is gonna be through there. Uh, our appointment for on July 20th, 11 a.m. is confirmed. Please reach out to phone number. Make sure you have the same phone number that you're trying to register. Don't use the default phone number here. So you would put out here. You would put the phone number that you're actually trying to register with A2P 10 DLC in case you need to race reschedule. And then the last thing that you have to have in the message is the reply stop to unsubscribe. Now it's important here, all the elements of any text message to be compliant need to have a couple of things. Number one, they have to actually address who is texting them. This is Dom from the Datapreneur and you have to actually ha name the business in the text message. You don't necessarily have to name your name, it's just more of a convenience thing, uh, but you need to name the business who's texting, you need to identify yourself. You also need to give them a way to unsubscribe and tell them right up front. That's why this reply stop to unsubscribe. Now for me, for good measure, I also let them know that standard messaging rates may apply. So I'll be STD message rates apply. I don't know, again, I don't know if that's 100% required. I do it to be safe. So it's right there, standard message rates apply, reply stop to unsubscribe. So again, I've identified who's texting them. I've told them that rate rates apply, and I've also given them a way to unsubscribe. Those are the three things that you need to make sure your text is compliant and it's gonna get approved. Now, sample message two would be the same thing. We need to go into, we'll copy another one here. We'll paste into there. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, hey, Brian, this is Dom from dombavero.com slash book. So again, sample message two, we wanna make sure we have all of those elements. We have who's texting them, give them a way out. And, I, and again, just for me, standard message rates apply. Give, make sure that everything there is compliant. Now on the bottom here, if you go, the message will include an embedded link. If you're sending someone a booking link, you need to actually have the, the HD URL that you're actually going to send people to with a link. So dombavaro.com slash book is not an actual link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my calendar link. Now on the bottom, once you give them your separate messages, you're gonna come down here where it says this message includes an embedded link. If you check that on, if you're sending people a link to say book a reschedule or something like that, you wanna include that actual link here. Someone's probably gonna click on that link to make sure that it's valid. So what you're going to do is dombavaro.com slash book is not an active link. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the link to this page and I'm gonna put it back in my messaging. So that again, this is where people are actually gonna to go to book the calendar appointment. And then same thing, messages will include phone numbers. So what we're gonna do is you wanna actually make the real phone number that you're trying to get registered in the sample message itself. If you have these checked on and these two don't check out, you will not get approved. All right, so the next part of the process is actually user consent. What is the process to opt in? And the purpose behind this is that carriers only want people getting text messages who expressly ask to actually uh, receive them. So what you're gonna do here, again, user consent, we can go see example, copy and paste the default that high level gives you. Now, you're gonna have to change some things. End users opt in by visiting. Again, put your uh, put your actual opt-in page here, domavero.com slash custom, because that's where I get most people opting in from there, and filling in their details. They're gonna check a box to receive notifications and promotional messages to provide their consent. Additionally, end users can text start to I don't really have people opting in by text, so what happens is I actually delete that. And that's really all, how do they opt in by visiting, which is there. And then the next box over here is gonna be opt-in message. What's the first message that they receive? Which again, has to have all of the who you're, who's texting them. And then once that's done, the next uh, opt-in message box here is going to be the first message that they receive after they opt in. It's also important that this particular message identifies you who's texting them, let them know that they've enrolled to receive automatic texts. 
Let them know that rest message rates apply and give them a way to opt out. So high levels, again, once again, has made it real easy. We copy and paste the exa example message. You've successfully opted in to receive notification promotional SMS from, put your business here. And you go re reply stop if you need to opt out in the future. And again, I just do my standard message rates apply. So again, I'm telling them who's texting them. I'm telling them that they actually opted in to receive promotional text messages. I'm giving them a way out and I'm telling them that message rates apply. Now it's important. We're going to go over to the page here that they're actually going to opt in to. Okay. So now that we're here on the page, they actually want you to send the form. Okay. So what happens is, is we're going to give them the link to the page where the person's going to opt in to receive text messages. We want to send the actual link and we want to make sure that this page itself is actually compliant. This is the page I send people to. And what happens is you have full name, email, phone number. And then you also want to have this little checkbox here. I'll show you how to do it in a second inside of high level, but the checkbox is there. And this was my final denial. I actually, uh, this terms and conditions, I didn't have it actually linked to my terms and conditions. You have to link it to your terms and conditions. So go over there, link a new tab. You see it links over here to my terms of service. So again, make sure that you have the link to the actual opt-in page. On the opt-in page, you need to have the actual checkbox that they're agreeing to terms of service. And you also want to have this terms and conditions actually linked to a terms of service page. If you don't have a terms of service page, let me turn you on to a really cool free resource. It's actually called Termly. I've pulled them up here on the screen. Uh, Termly is a great place for you to get things like privacy policies, terms of services, stuff like that. Uh, I'll leave a link to them down below. Again, it is free but you can go here to pri uh, products and you can go into terms and conditions generator or privacy policy generator, either one. I actually have both on my website. Essentially what happens is they're going to ask you questions about your business, how you're texting them, how you're, uh, how you're storing their information. And what you're going to do is you're going to answer the questions. It takes about 20 minutes to do. And then what's going to do is it spit out something like this. Uh, this was copy and pasted directly from what Termly gave me. And uh, it was based on my answers and it is all compliant language and it all got approved for the A2P registration. So now that you have your terms of service, let me actually show you how I linked all of this up. So we're here inside of high level and we're going to go here again. I want to show you just where I, uh, where I parked the page into sites. I go onto my website and I just have my privacy policy, my income disclaimer, my terms of service. I have the terms of service page over here. It's just linked over to there. And then once you get into the form builder screen, this is actually over here. If you go into the, uh, into the add form element, it'll default now to it if you're building a new form, but it is uh, terms and conditions. Where is it? TNC. If you drag this one into here, it's going to bring that little box that's over there. It's the TNC right down here. And then when you come into here, cause my phone number, I agree to receive text messages and agree to terms and conditions. The only thing that you have to do is go on the right side here, highlight the terms and conditions, hit the little three dots and then link to your actual URL where the terms and conditions are. Again, I didn't do this. It was a blank link for me. And that was my fourth, third or fourth denial. One of those there, make sure that's linked. And then once you've done that and that's embedded onto the page, once you've done that, you can come back here into A2P because you have a compliant page link that actually has a compliant form linked to a real compliant terms and conditions. That's where most people are going to mess up when that's there. You're going to hit the submit button and it's going to take about two days I've seen for me, it's been about two days to get the brand uh, registered. That's a really quick, some people get that done in a matter of hours. And then it's about, you know, three to five business days for the actual campaign to get approved. And I pulled this up here. Here's actually all of my attempts here. It was one, two, three, four failures. And then this is finally the approval. When you get approved, it will look something like this. Your A2P campaign is approved. If you get something that is a failure, you'll see here it is. It'll tell you the reason why you failed and how to fix it. But if you follow the steps in this video, hopefully you're not going to get declined. So that about does it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm documenting my journey over to 2000 subscribers. I'll actually drop a link to a free course showing you how to get your own high level SaaS agency up and running in the description. And I will see you in one of these videos up in the corner.